So now that we've established sort of the beginning of what Gregor Mendel really did, we looked at his background, his you know history as an Austrian monk, and just the basic idea that he established the rules of inheritance and the basis of genetics through using that Garden P experimental model organism because of its many advantages, we can continue our discussion on the man himself by entitling the next flowchart Gregor Mendel II. Next, we want to start talking about a little bit more, let's say, hardcore genetics. So that we've established um, the experimental organism, the Garden P, and the idea of cross-fertilization, where we want to manipulate fertilization in a way that we see variation, that we see the addition of new characteristics. The next word or term you definitely need to understand is characters. Now, I'm not talking about people in a story. I'm not talking about uh, movie characters. What I'm specifically speaking about when we say characters is this. A character is a specific property, and this is a definition you just have to know. A specific property of an organism. Property of organism. And here's the key. That, that is, and I'm going to write this in big letters because we need to absolutely remember this, inherited. This is what Mendel looked at. He looked at inherited characters, the color of a pea plant, the color of its seed, whether or not the seed was round or wrinkled, and etc. These are all things that are inherited. You inherited characters from your mom and your dad. But there's a bit of variation. You didn't inherit every single character gene for gene from your mom nor from your dad. What you saw or what you express, a more specific way to talk about this is sort of an extension of characters are traits. So traits work off of this definition of characters, but more specifically, we can say that traits are each variant. Each variant. I'm going to underline this word. It's important. Of a character. Because remember, now that we're speaking about genetics, you have to get into the mindset of thinking of all this variation that you see around you. From the organisms that you see, from the color of fur, to the color of eyes, to the color of hair, to the height, to the weight. All these things are variations. How did they happen? What caused these variations? And that's the beauty of genetics. That's what we're going to hopefully appreciate it to a much greater extent as we continue our discussion. But going back to this idea of trait, a trait is simply a character, but a variation of that character. I think it's a good way to understand, a good way to understand this is to simply give you some examples. Same examples that Mendel saw. So if I draw, or if I write out a character here, I'm going to talk about the specific trait. The character is what is inherited. The trait is the variation of that inherited thing, let's say. So let's imagine maybe flower color. So we'll say flower color. That's our character. That is something that we know for a fact that Mendel figured out can be inherited and is inherited. But there are variations to the flower color that he saw. Those variations were purple versus white. These were the literal traits that he saw, each variant of a character. So we have flower color, purple versus white. Let's imagine a human example, hair color, brown versus blonde. This is a character, the general thing, let's say, and the trait is the specific variant. Another one that Mendel saw was seed color. Again, remember, the advantages of the pea plant was that the simple characteristics are easily identifiable and observable. Color is very easy to see, the difference between purple and white. Seed color, it's very easy to see the difference between the two character traits of yellow versus green. So this is the idea that Mendel established. The wording specifically might not have been there in what he sort of discovered, but what we need to understand and appreciate is the idea of things being inherited but those things having variations. Now, I'm not going to mention what those things are yet. You might have an idea, but hopefully by the end of this, we'll be able to give a name to those things that are inherited. So, that's the establishment of characters and traits. Know the difference between the two. I think it's very easy to know the difference once you've got this example down. 
Another very important thing that Mendel did was use quantitative methods. So we're going to write down quantitative, quantitative methods. As scientists or biologists, we always want quantitative information, right? We always want real hardcore numbers that are very easily identifiable, very easily provable, replicable, things that are quantitative. We don't really, um, we sort of err on the edge of, let's say, not really wanting qualitative data, though it's important. But what Mendel specifically did was he used a very, very nice experimental approach. Now, if we remember all the way from lecture one, the idea of using an experimental approach is important because this is how you're going to record data. This is how you're going to plan things. And Mendel did this. He used a very classic experimental approach that allowed him to get quantitative data. And through this quantitative data and through this experimental approach, he was able to utilize mathematical, let me rewrite that, mathematical analysis. Now, this sounds boring. It sounds like, okay, big deal. This happens all the time. What's incredible to me specifically and hopefully to you is that Mendel was the first guy to say, you know what? I'm going to study inheritance. I'm going to study traits that are passed down, but I'm not just going to look at them haphazardly. I'm not just going to look at them and just say, oh, okay, that's something that's passed down. I'm going to actually mathematically analyze them. I'm going to experimentally approach them and label out exactly what I see in terms of how a character and how its specific variant trait is inherited and the pattern that I see and the sort of specific components that I quantitatively are, am measuring. What's the end-all be-all? He was simply the first guy to do this. I'm going to say first guy ever to do this. First guy ever to look at genetics from a quantitative, experimental, mathematical approach and that's what caused him to sort of be the father of genetics. That's what he's known as, and this is that reason. He was one of the first people, the first person, from my knowledge at least, to utilize methods such as these. So it's not that important to really you know, know what these are specifically. We'll actually prove and see the methods that he used as we move forward. It's just important to realize how he was the trailblazer, how he was the first ever to do these things all over 100 years ago. And the last thing we'll talk about in terms of Gregor Mendel is the idea of true breeding lines. This is something we need to understand as we go into the experiments that he, um, he was able to complete. We have to understand what true breeding lines are. I think it's very easy to sort of at least uh, guess from this point forward, but we'll just put words to what we already probably know in terms of true breed or pure breeding. Um, so we can state that true breeding is defined as when we express same trait, same trait, generation to generation, so that's generation to generation, gen to gen, after self-fertilization. Basically, another way to put this and another way to sort of define all of this is to say that TBL, what do you think that stands for? True breeding lines is equal to all individuals, and when we say individuals, we're obviously referring to the pea plants, um, express same traits and characters. Same traits slash, let's say, just C-A-R-A-C, -A -A I can fit that in there, characters characters. Okay, so what do I mean by this? What are true breeding lines, let's say, from a more of an example standpoint? What we can say about this idea of true breeding lines is that everybody within this line, within this generation to generation of self-fertilization, is going to express same, and this is a new word, hopefully you've seen it before in your high school classes, phenotype. They're going to express the same phenotype over and over and over and over again after self-fertilization. Now, what does that provide us? What is a phenotype? A phenotype, just look at the pH over here. It's very easy to remember that this is just simply means um, the same physical appearance. Physical appearance. 
So a true breeding line of purple flowers will always, after self-fertilization, give you what? Give you more purple flowers because they are a true breeding line. Express the same phenotype after generation, 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 generation. This is an important concept to understand because now what we're going to do is utilize this known fact of generation to generation being the same over and over and over again. And remember how we said self-fertilization was kind of boring? We're going to manipulate that. We're going to say, you know what, instead of self-fertilizing, what if I take a different flower, let's say a different color, and I don't self-fertilize, and I say, you know what, I'm going to take this different flower and see if this still holds up, if this true breeding nonsense still holds up. Do I see some variation? And this is the idea that we'll start seeing later of masking. And we'll talk about that in a future video. Overall, what I want you to remember about these physical appearances, these physical traits, pH, pH, very easy to remember, physical phenotype, physical phenotype, is that Gregor Mendel was able to utilize all of these things, and uh, it's important to remember that they were all measurable, the things that he saw. Why is it important that they're all measurable? Because look, he used quantitative methods, and to prove that, he was able to measure everything that he looked at. When we say things like plant length, I've mentioned some of these. He looked at plant height. He looked at the shape, round versus wrinkled, even colored. All these things, these length, height, shape, color, a bunch of other things that he looked at are all measurable. And because they're all measurable, it aids in the idea of him looking at quantitative genetics, quantitative methods to study the passing on on the inheritance of characters and thus traits. And then true breeding lines is something that's important to establish right now because we're going to manipulate this. We're going to change this by doing something along the lines of what I did here. Don't worry if you're a little confused about what I did here. We're going to actually look at a real life Gregor Mendel example in our next couple of videos.